We welcome you into another episode of Talking Blizz with Joey Bonadonna. And this week, we welcome in wide receiver number 18, Harry Ballard III. Harry, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. Coming off of a big win this past week in Iowa, uh, you came away with our player of the game in that one. And obviously, that was one that the offense had another great game. It's two games in a row where you guys scored 50 points in a row. But overall, how are you feeling coming off of that win? Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty solid. You know, even though last week we had a couple guys that were sat out as well as B and Cagle, and it just really like feel good for them to play Frisco and win that game just off, um, you know, mentally preparing that week. And then we came in the same way. As far as coming to play Iowa, you know, we had a game plan. We had everything set to go, and then we just came in and did our job. So. And now this is the, the second time that you've kind of come away with a player of the game for us. And they've all kind of come here within the last few months, or the last few months. And you mentioned you sat out that Frisco game. But even when you've been on the field, regardless, you've been making uh, some, some pretty, pretty big games for yourself, putting them together, great performances. What's the, we'll touch on this a little later, but the adjustment to the indoor game, have you been kind of coming along with that now as we hit the midpoint of the season? Yeah, you know, at the beginning of the season, you know, it's a new game. Uh, starting off at high motion, you know, it's different from playing outdoors as far as starting in stationary and then getting into your route. Now you're already, you know, at kind of like full speed getting into the route. So it's a big adjustment. Uh, you think it just took me a little bit longer than what I expected, and the coaches, you know, had a lot of great patience with me. And then I think I'm not only finally starting to pick it up and, you know, we're starting to hit the ball roll, and hopefully, you know, I keep getting these player of the games and having big games, and we'll go from there. And we'll take things back to the very beginning, the start of you playing football. Um, obviously, it, it all starts somewhere. When did you start playing football, and what, what kind of brought you along in the game as you grow up? Uh, yeah, I started playing football when I was about, I think, six years old, going on seven. I played in this uh, league called the JFL, it's the Junior Football League. Uh, I played with the Herbert Hoover Eagles. <laughs> I remember it was the first year I actually played a lot of defense. I started off playing a lot of defense and running back, so it was just really fun playing and growing up, and I always liked to play Madden sometimes growing up and just watching a whole lot of athletes uh, growing up, especially with the Rams still back in St. Louis. I got to go to a lot of those games, and I just fell in love with it from the jump. And, you know, when position will change, finally I started getting into a receiver, which I play now, and I never look back. I like uh, being pretty because, you know, receivers are called the pretty people, pretty boys on offense. So we catch the ball, score, score a lot. You know, we get all the love from the fans, which is why, you know, the – that's the na nature of the game. We love it. We love playing football, being out there. The fans play a big role. We just love the attention and the love. And um, you touched on you know being from St. Louis and growing up with the Rams. Kurt Warner obviously was one of the key players for for those teams back with with the Rams, the greatest show on turf. Um, and obviously he got his start playing arena indoor football as well with with Iowa. And now you just kind of came off of another big game against that same team does that kind of feel like a full circle moment looking up in the rafters seeing 13 warner and knowing that that's kind of where you got your start with football growing up yeah it was really nice I, uh, it's kind of a you know like a monumental moment that you can see like you go around see like the arch and stuff and you go to uh, the iowa barnstormers uh, game facility and you look up you see that kurt warner jersey it's really nice to see that it just like gives you like opportunity of like yeah you know they can you can be a player on any stage and you know still make it to the the highest level of football so it's really nice to see that and then moving on from there your your collegiate career you made a few stops around your co your mm -hmm. college career where'd you learn from all those spots because obviously many different levels juco mm -hmm. to the sec mm -hmm. to uh fcs and then back to fbs finishing up with nevada what was that experience like for you seeing all those different kind of cultures along your way uh, it was just pretty much like a lot of adjusting, which is like really well for me as far as like coming like now. I caught on and I was starting to adjust really fast and, you know, learning a lot of different offenses, playing up under a lot of coaches, seeing the way everyone sees the game, like learning different philosophies of other coaches. It's all really nice to have that in your my football IQ, which is like probably what makes me like one of the smartest receivers, I would say. Because, you know, there's learning how every coach thinks, learning different offenses from air raid to uh, you know, to pro offenses, you know, it's really good to be able to adjust to, all, to everything in this game. And one of your stops was at Arkansas Pine Bluff, and a mm -hmm. few familiar faces um, on this team also played at Arkansas yeah. Pine Bluff. 
Did you guys all, all make connections when you, when you were all there um, overlapping with each other? Or, or what was that situation like when, when you guys all kind of got back here, knowing that you all shared that experience? It was really nice knowing that, you know, there's going to be some guys on the team that I know. So, you know, I got some, you know, already have some connections on the team. It was really solid. And just, you know, looking back on those guys playing in college with them, you know, those are guys that I already trust. So I know that we're they're building a good pro like program around us. And I feel like, you know, that's what it's all about. And then finishing off, um, well, first, your your time with Missouri, getting a chance to go there, your your home state. What was that experience like, being able to be around an SEC program like you did while you were there? Oh, it was nice. I loved it. I loved it. It was really, really, really nice. You know, just an unfortunate turn of events, you know, that everybody can't play it, you know. So it was really nice going there, competing, get to see, you know, I did practice for a whole spring and everything and stuff like that. So it was really nice competing against those guys and just really showing that I can compete on any level of football, which is what keeps me going every day. And then finishing off, getting to go back to FBS at Nevada in the Mountain West, what was that experience like being able to finish off back up closer to the, the higher levels of Division One? It was really nice. It was really nice, you know, just getting that travel in and getting to, you know, getting to meet other players like Rome, Dobbs, which is who's right up the street, and then Caution Strong playing up under those guys are really nice to have in the bag. You know, learning a lot from Rome has helped me as well. You know, me and those guys like best friends who play the game all the time, and it's just really nice having that backbone of uh, – of, of what I say, uh, IQ and information from learning from them to bring to my level and has still helped me out to this day. So then now getting the opportunity um, to move to the indoor game and what was that conversation like this offseason with Coach Roberson and making that decision to come to Green Bay and play in the IFL? Uh, it was really nice. You know, he called me on, the, uh, I think it was, it was probably like, uh, I don't know, probably like Thursday night or something like that. You know, I get a call. He's like, because uh, I talked to Sean Steele. Sean Steele is my guy. He's like, hey, uh, you looking to play football again? I was like, yeah, because I was over in Germany for a while, by the last season. And I was like, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to stay home, stay in the States. And I think it's a good chance of competition, high level of competition as well. So Coach Rowe called me. He was like, hey, man, uh, Coach Rowe, you know, for Green Bay Blizzards, how you like, how you feel about, you know, coming in and possibly, you know, playing indoor? I was like, I thought about it. I talked to my parents, looked it over. I was like, yeah, I think this would be a better opportunity to come in and, you know, get some, get some play against, you know, higher skill level guys versus over in Germany, you know. Those guys are still great athletes, but, you know, the competition level is completely different versus playing at home. So it was really nice hearing Coach Roll. He, uh, I think the first thing he asked me is like, why do you do it? Like, what's your why? Stuff like that. And I told him my why is just, just to keep going and knowing that uh, I still got a lot of football left in me, still believe in myself. Just, you know, one opportunity is always all you need to get to the next level. So Coach Roll really looked out for me. You know, now I'm always telling him, you can't get rid of me now. So I'm here to stay. <laughs> and that, that was a big mantra for this team uh, across the season was one more. And um, the one more rep, one more day, one more game. Um, and knowing that that's all you want to, to go forward and keep playing your, your football career, um, that's obviously a big step and big fit with what things have gone on this year in 2024. But obviously this is your first year with the team, but mm -hmm. knowing what's, what this team's been through in the last few years of getting to the playoffs in 2019, then mm -hmm. COVID, then three years of trying to get back to that spot. Um, what's been the buy-in for this team this year of getting back to that spot and now at the halfway point, you guys are pretty close in position to, to mm -hmm. getting back into that, that playoff push down the home stretch. Mm -hmm. Pretty much just finding a way to win games by all means possible. You know, uh, obviously, we, you know, everyone has their adversity that they come through. I think we face adversity really well as a team, so I think that's our – our thing when adversity strikes, you know, we we conquer it at all times. You know, something happens in the game, or as far as like not giving up, even though we did drop two games we weren't supposed to lose. You know, the way we bounced back and came back and fought through the next games is really solid. And then obviously one more, another one against the Quad City Steamers, a team you already played this season, mm -hmm. and you talked about the adversity last time you saw this team. Uh, you were down Max Myler, and it was mm -hmm. Skylar Perry, another guy from Arkansas Pine Bluff, who had to step in on, on short notice and take the reins that week. Um, but obviously the, the means to push forward and win that game were huge. And now you see this team again welcoming them, welcoming them into your own home turf. What goes into this game this week 
against the Steam Wheelers? Uh, just coming in mentally focused because, you know, as you said, like as we're climbing up in the ranks, you know, everyone wants to play as everyone wants to be the team to beat that team. So as far as right now, you know, we got that target on our back. We're just looking to come in and handle our business and not, you know, not play down to any other team's level of competition, you know, just come in and take care of business like we did last week. Obviously having Max is, you know, a, a big plus this week again. So, you know, we just look forward to stick to the game plan and then we should take care of business early. Hopefully it'll be a really nice game for everyone to see. And it's uh, 90s night this week at um, the Rush Center, second to last home game. That's something that's kind of that I, I'm struggling to come to terms with that. I mean, there's still a lot of season left, but not a lot of games left at home for the regular season at least, but knowing that you guys, if you guys handle business down the stretch, you guys could have an opportunity to come back and play at home um, in July in the playoffs. Um, and again, one week at a time, but when you get into that position and knowing that you're in a playoff push, you're pushing to play for another day, what goes through your mind in those situations? Uh, you know, pretty much just staying locked in, doing the things that we have been doing from before. Just because, you know, we're winning doesn't mean, you know, you change up the strategies, doesn't mean you change up, like, every all the scenarios and things. You don't do different things. You know, you keep doing what's been working or you do even more of adding on to what's had already been there. So it's part of just building a great foundation and just sticking to it in this last week. Because, you know, not these away games, you know, it's a big – Big, big struggle, not struggle, but it's a stress on bodies and stuff like that. Cause constantly traveling and stuff, you know, you got to make sure you get your sleep and resting and recovering. So everything plays a big, a big part in everything. So we can make this playoff run and come back to the rush center. And finally, the uh, the last thing we wanted to touch on is uh, you made a big play earlier um, th in the last month against the Iowa Barnstormers that that got you on the Sports Center, number one on top ten mm -hmm. uh, that night. What was your reaction to that? And obviously that, that kind of happened pretty quickly. It was mm -hmm. right after the game and kind of circulating the next day. But what was your reaction when, when you got to see that clip uh, on Sports Center and, and plastered uh, on a lot of places across social mm -hmm. media? Uh, it was really nice. It was like more of a surreal moment because, you know, a lot of people grow up or a lot of kids grow up, you know, watching those Sports Center top 10 plays and, you know, you go up like, ah, there's like one in a million chance that I'll be on there. And, you know, I think we were out eating at the uh, our food, our team sponsor, D2s. We were out just eating, grabbing food after the game, you know, uh, meeting people. And, you know, we look up and we watch the Sports Center top 10, and it gets all the way like 3, 2, and then we see one. And we see our field, we're like, wait a minute. And then we see the catch, and it was like, wow, that's amazing. It was Sports Center top 10, you know. It was just really nice to see that, you know, my parents called me, you know, everyone in my family seeing it. It was really nice having that on my back, you know, and I can always have bragging rights against my brothers. <laughs> and then there was one, like this past week, you got another catch over the boards that I thought was going to be back on there again. Mm -hmm. We might be seeing you twice in the same month, but uh, unfortunately that one didn't make the cut. Mm -hmm. But still, the, the opportunity that you're making big plays in the indoor game and First, let's talk about the adjustment to have to make catches over the boards. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, when you, you fall over the boards, there's either seats or concrete back yeah. there. Uh, what goes through your mind when you're making big plays like that? Uh, those big plays, you know, I think the first, the very first time I had one over the board, I actually dropped the ball, and I remember that feeling. I was like, ah. Uh. I said, like, it, it's still, like, it gets you, you know, depending on how you land, it could possibly hurt, but you don't feel it in the moment. You know, you feel a little aftermath, like, probably, like, two minutes later. But I just remember getting up, I was like, this would have been a lot better if I just caught it. So so now it's just, you know, you I know when I'm going to go over, I can kind of feel the sense when I'm getting, like, really near or close to the board, and I'll just, everything that goes to my head, I was like, this would be a lot better fall if I just catch it. So I kept, like, every time I go over the board, I try to catch it, which I have been doing, and it's just a surreal moment. It brings a lot of energy to the, the fans, you know, momentum swings, catching a ball over the board. It's like, you know, like a, a momentum swing in like outdoor football. You know, they have those big plays, stuff like that. You know, catching a, catching a ball over the board brings one of those high energy plays and carries over to the next or the next play or the rest of the game. Absolutely. And before we wrap things up here for uh, this week's episode, again, big game against uh, the Quad City Steam Wheelers. We got any parting words for, for Blizzard Nation before we uh, we have another big game tomorrow? Uh, we appreciate the support. You guys keep coming out. We'll keep trying to win these games for you guys and get a home game for playoffs, and hopefully we can pack, pack the house. And the Blizzard, again, against the Steam Wheelers tomorrow night on Friday night against the Steam Wheelers on 90s night. Uh, another opportunity to take a season series against an Eastern Conference rival 
that'll just about wrap things up here for this week's episode. I want to thank Harry Ballard for his time this week and want to thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Talking Blizz. See you in the next one, and as always, go Blizz.